this video we're going to look at the vector texture creation function and how it can be used to generate different types of textures everything from kind of wavy textures like you can see here that could be used on an architectural panel all the way through to vectors that will generate a sort of faux wood grain let's begin by opening a new copy of the software let's start by creating a new file and we're going to make this job 24 inches by 12 inches and 0.75 inches thick. I'm going to take Z0 at the top and XY0 in the lower left and go ahead and hit OK. The vector texture icon is located under create vectors and is here. It's the one that looks like waves inside of a circle. If we click on that, we come into the function and now we can start to specify the parameters that are going to control the vector texture that we create. Now the vector textures are all essentially based on a series of waves that the software generates depending on the parameters that we enter. Starting at the top we specify the angle that the wave is going to flow along. So in this case I'm going to leave this set to zero. Next we have the line spacing which is the distance between each of our waves. So this I'm going to set to one for the moment. And below that we have the ability to add randomness to this by moving the slider all the way to the right makes it as random as possible all the way to the left will ensure that there's zero randomness and that we guarantee one inch spacing between each of our lines next we have the amplitude which is the distance between the peaks of the wave then we have the wavelength which is the distance that the wave will repeat over so for these i'm going to set this to one and the wavelength to six then we can add a different type of randomness by adding noise to our lines. Again, all the way to the left means no noise, to the right means maximum noise. The slider in between will just give you varying um, degrees of that. Lastly, we have the option, if we check this box here, to place the vectors on a particular layer. If that layer doesn't exist, then it will just create the layer in order to place the vectors on. So let's go ahead and with the parameters we've entered here, click on the preview button and we can see the vector texture that that generates for us in the 2D view. Now we can just go through the form, continue to make edits to it, hitting the preview button in order to generate new variations of this texture until we've got something we like. Let's show you what some of the values do now. So if we change the angle to 30 degrees and hit preview, you can see we get essentially the same wave, but now it's at a 30 degree angle to the horizontal. And we could change that to 60 or any other value in order to generate um, whatever angle we want. In addition, we can set it here with the slider in order to change the angle as well. So really, either of those will work. Let's just set that back to zero. For the spacing, we have this set to one inch at the moment. That means the distance between each of these will be one inch. We can make that larger, hit preview, or we can make that smaller hit preview there again to see the new result. If we change that back to one, the other thing we can do with the spacing is add randomness, as I mentioned before. So if we move that about halfway along, we start to see that we no longer have a consistent one inch spacing. If we push that all the way to the right, then we start to get quite a lot of variation in where the software might position each adjacent line. Let's just slide that all the way back to zero again to get back to our original setting. For the amplitude, this is specifying the distance between the peak and trough of the wave. So if we set this to be a higher value, then it will get much steeper. Or if we set it to be a lower value, then it will get a lot shallower. The wavelength is where the wave starts to repeat. In this case, we've got six inch wavelength. So we're effectively seeing four repeats across a 24 inch part. I can set this to be much smaller again, or I can set it to be a lot larger maybe say 18 inches or even bigger than the part itself so we don't get even one complete wave over the distance of the part we're working at here. Obviously I can change any of these parameters at any time in order to create what is in effect an infinite number of variations. Let's just set these back to amplitude 1 and wavelength 6, hit preview again. Finally we have the noise which adds a different type of randomness to our wave. If I move this a little bit then you can see our wave starts to get fuzzy all the way to the right then we really start to introduce quite a lot of difference to the original. 
Now this will use all the distance it can in between the waves. So the bigger the spacing, the more effect the noise will appear to have. If we turn that back to zero again and change the spacing maybe down to 0.2 and hit preview there and now start to introduce noise, you see it doesn't appear to be quite so extreme because it's not working with such large amounts of difference between each of the lines. Let's just set that back to zero, set the spacing back to one again. The last part of the form gives me the option to place the group of vectors I'm going to create on a particular layer. If I don't check the box then it'll just put them onto what was the current layer when we came into the function. If I do want to put these on a particular layer then I check the box and enter the layer name and if that layer doesn't exist then it will be created. So we'll call this test, hit preview and now I have the choice to either hit OK, which will accept that I want to create this set of vectors and exit the form, or I can hit Cancel, which will discard the vectors or any changes I've made and then exit the function as well. Here, let's go ahead and hit OK, and we can see that a layer called Test has been created, these vectors have been placed on it, and what we've actually made here is a group of vectors. So if I select it, you can see there that highlights as a group. Now let's just switch off that layer that we just created those on, come back, make layer 1 current again. And I'm just going to sketch a shape here, we'll make a um, pentagon in this case, and just hit F9 to centre that, right mouse click to accept it, and show you that if we have a selected vector when we create one of these vector textures then it will use that as a boundary. So if we come into the Vector Texture command now, just take the settings that we had before there. I'm not going to place these vectors on a layer this time. We'll hit Preview and now it will use that boundary in order to keep those vectors within it. If I deselect that and hit Preview, then it just goes back to using the full Job Setup area. Again, Select and Preview and it will keep it inside the selected vector. Let's change a couple of the values here and create a different um, set of waves in there and go ahead and hit OK so that will be created. And Let's show you now the fact that when we create one of these vector textures, as long as we don't ungroup it or edit it significantly, then the software will remember that it's a vector texture and if we select it and go back into the form, it will repopulate the form with the values that we used to create the original one. So here, for instance, we can switch off layer 1, switch on the test layer, close that, and if I select this and come back into the vector texture form, it will remember the values that I used in order to create that originally, so that now it's very easy for me to make edits and changes to it um, in order to create a variation on that original set of vectors. This is very useful if you want to apply these vector textures across different types of jobs, maybe just making slight tweaks to the settings in order to fit the size or application of something. Another important aspect to these vector textures is a typical application for them is to make sort of architectural wall panels. Quite often when doing that, you want those panels to be tileable so the edges match up, even though they may be machined on separate pieces of material. There are effectively two approaches to this in the software. If your texture is quite even and is at an angle of 0 or 90 degrees and the wavelength of it exactly divides into the width or height depending on the angle and that you have no noise involved in the texture then you should be able to create a single panel that will be repeatable and I'll show you that in a moment. If you've got any kind of variation in the texture or the wavelength is not an equal divider into the length or height of the part or the angle is not at zero, then the chances are it's not going to be possible to make individual repeatable panels. In that case, what you'd want to do is make a large job, which was the size of the overall area that you wanted to cover with panels, make a large vector texture to cover that and then either edit the vectors themselves dividing them up, trimming them, or use the toolpath tiling in order to chop that down into the individual panels so that the edges match. In this example we have one of the raw regular textures, so we've got an angle of 0, a wavelength of 6 which divides exactly 4 times into the size of the part I've got here and I have no noise in it at all. So if I hit OK, what I should be able to do is if I zoom out here is select this, 
click on it again to go into the um, transform mode and come over and just make sure I hover over the very end node here control and drag that in order to create a copy so there you can see it's repeatable in that direction then select hover over the node there and move that up and snap that into position there and now you can see again that we've got that repeatably vertically and horizontally as I say though there is a very strict set of circumstances for this will for when this will be the case and when you wouldn't need to make a very large panel that was then divided up manually or using the toolpath tiling so let's take these and just delete these extra copies now hit F to fit and now the last thing I want to do is show you four different examples that we can create using this function. I'm going to set these up in such a way that we can use that file in other tutorials to show you how these types of vectors could be machined to make these texture panels. Let's go ahead and delete the ones we've already created. So I'm just going to switch on both layers here, close this, grab everything and hit delete on the keyboard. I'm going to come in and right mouse click and delete that extra layer there. Now the first layer here I'm going to rename as cutout vector and hit close and in a minute I'm going to create a rectangular vector on that that we'll use ultimately to cut out the different texture panels that we make in the machining tutorials. Now when we create a texture like this it's important that we allow the tool to go past the edge of the panel so that we don't end up with it sort of lifting up right on the edge there. So typically what we're going to do is make a larger sized object than we need in terms of the texture and then cut that back to an outline in the part. So in this case if I wanted to make 24 inch by 12 inch panels I actually need my part to be a little bit bigger than that so I've got some overlap on the edges. Let's come up and click on the icon to set job dimensions. I'm going to change this to be 25 by 13 and hit OK. Now on this cutout vector layer I'm going to create a vector, rectangular vector which is 24 by 12, create and close, select that and hit F9 on the keyboard in order to center it. So each of the panels we're ultimately planning to make will be cut out around that vector but the vector texture will go past its edge to ensure that I get a clean entry and exit from those texture panels when I machine it. Let's come over to the vector texture icon again and click on that to create the first of the examples we're going to use in the machining tutorials. For this one I want a fairly simple wave so I'm going to keep the angle at zero. Now the spacing becomes quite important when we start to think about how these are going to be machined. Typically I'm going to profile or texture toolpath depending what um, edition of the software I have on the vectors so the tool will follow along these vectors. So if I want the texture to um, overlap I need to make sure that the spacing is smaller than the diameter of the tool. So in effect you can think of it a bit like the step over that we set up when we're um, defining the tool parameters for the different toolpath strategies. Here for this one I'm going to imagine I'm going to use something like a half inch ball nose or a large v-bit so I'm going to set the spacing to be 0.3. I'm going to set the amplitude in this case to be 1 and the wavelength to be 6 and I'm going to make sure there's no variation and no noise. I'm going to place these vectors on a layer called wave, hit preview and OK. So I'm happy with the way that looks. I'm going to come up to the layer drop down, undraw that layer and select the cutout vector layer to be current again. Come back into the vector texture command. The next one I want to create is going to be at an angle of 45 degrees this time I'm going to slightly increase the spacing and the amplitude I'm going to set is going to be one and a half and the wavelength for this is going to remain at six. Now I want to place these vectors on a layer and we'll call this um, one step. If we hit preview you can see why that's kind of stepping up there so 45 degrees in the other settings that we've specified. Again I'm not adding any variation or noise into this so it's a very consistent pattern. Let's go ahead and hit OK there just undraw that layer we've created and go back to the original one. Again into the function here. Now what I'm going to do is start to create a more um, kind of free flowing texture. So I'm going to set the angle to be 60 degrees, increase the spacing a little bit again, 
I'm going to set the amplitude for this one to be quite high and I'm going to set the wavelength to be quite long so I'm going to set this to be 16 inches so we've got amplitude 8 wavelength 16 we'll place these on a vector layer called swirl if I hit preview you can see again we've got quite a consistent pattern there and I would like to add a bit more variation this time so I'm going to slide the slider under the spacing here about two thirds of the way along hit preview you can see now that's just introduced a little bit of randomness into it which will be more interesting when we machine this Let's hit OK undraw that layer switch that off go back to the original cutout vector layer here and then the last texture that I want to create is going to kind of emulate a wood grain so this time I want a very low angle I want a very small spacing because I want these lines to be close together I'm going to use an extremely small amplitude because I don't want much variation a wood grain doesn't have a huge wave to it and I'm going to stick with a long wavelength in this case so I'm going to go with 18 inches we'll keep the variation we'll call this layer grain hit preview so we can see what that gives us and then if we zoom in on that you can see it's still quite smooth and I think for a wood grain it would be nice to have a little bit of jaggedness to it so we can use the noise slider and preview and that's probably a little bit too much so we'll just back off hit preview again and I like the way that looks that's now just adding a little bit of jagged effect there onto my line so if we zoom back out we can see how that's going to look and that's given me quite a nice kind of wood grainy flow Let's go ahead and hit OK there and now you can see we've got our different layers that we've created each of these on the swirl the step and the wave I'm just going to select that to be my current layer close this and we'll come up say file save as and in the project folder here we'll call this file vector texture underscore vector so that we know that contains the design um, information for this particular file and as I say in some of the other machining tutorials we'll look at both how to take these patterns we've created and use 2D toolpaths to machine them and then in another tutorial we'll look at how to machine them with 2.5D and 3D toolpaths. Let's go ahead and click on the save button here so we can save a copy of that file in the project folder And then the last thing I'd like to show you here is just to describe a bit more specifically about the type of vectors you're getting. In most cases this will be irrelevant because you'll just go on to take the pattern and machine it. However it's worth knowing that if you need to do something else with these what you're actually dealing with. Let's just come up and turn off the cutout vector layer for the moment so we've just got this one with the wave on it. Now whenever we use the vector um, texture creation function it's going to make a group of vectors so if I click on any one of these you just see it highlighted as a group. If I was to ungroup this then we'll see individual lines and if I select any one of these and hit N on the keyboard you'll see that this is made up of lots and lots of small straight line segments so in fact a polyline it isn't a smooth curve. Now in most situations this is fairly irrelevant because when we create a toolpath on this type of line it would effectively be output as lots of little small segments anyway so you're not going to see any um, difference in the quality of machining this or machining a curve. In some situations though you may want to convert this into a smoother line perhaps for editing or working within a different application. To do that we can select it we can click on the icon here to fit curves to selected vectors. If I go to Bezier curves, hit preview and OK, we can see if we now go into node editing what that curve would look like if I was to smooth it. As I mentioned before though, there's really no need to do this unless you have a very specific need to have these smooth curves. For the purposes of machining, the original set of vectors that were generated by the vector texture function will be perfectly fine. And that concludes this video.